all Go together. Ahead. And if nothing happens, if nothing happens, the way I see it, it is a stepping stone because illustrated child porn should be illegal. It is not protected speech. It is not protected expression. It and is. It is. No, it, it isn't. It is and both th of those things. No, it isn't. Fucking... This, ladies and gentlemen, is Digibro. And that dude yelling at him, his name is Tommy C. Now, how serious is Tommy C? It's real simple. These guys are fucking idiots, man. <laughs> <laughs> like, the end of the day, just some of the dumbest motherfuckers. I I, I just, the Endless Jess guy. Now, I know that you, you, you have a little bit of a different opinion on him today. Yeah. But what a fucking pretentious douche. <laughs> this might be what a pro wrestling fan calls a work. <laughs> now, but to be fair, yeah. in an effort of solidarity. Yes. Ah, I was wrong. You were wrong, <laughs> motherfucker. I can't. You have a Hello on. Kitty hat. Do you t tell me you have a Hello Kitty hat, though. No, that's not your a daughter's. Hat, but it's glasses. It's even better. Come on, I one up the bitch. There's part of me of what suspects that Tommy is doing is contrived, that he's putting on a show. Apparently, Lumpke drove six hours to uh, Digimon. To, I don't care if I get his name right or not. I know I took some heat for that, but fuck him. Uh, okay. Six hours, this guy's had to hang out and do videos. Can you imagine? Really? Can you imagine? Like, and I asked him, I was like, are you upset about it? Is like, are you legitimately upset? Thank you, Luna, Princess Dave. <laughs> oh, here we go. All right, that's three bucks. Okay, <laughs> it, it was three bucks though, not five. Okay, it's five here, Luna. Three on my show. He's a much fucking higher class whore. Okay? <laughs> but I'll do it for you, Luna, because but you're so good to me. Five hours, and you know, the 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 only thing they're worried about is like. You know, getting shit from, uh, and they admittedly knew Jess longer, and they were willing to like stab this guy in the back, um, right in the over back. a disagreement. You know, it and doesn't really make sense. It does. It's fucking YouTube. It happened to us. Remember? <laughs> now, to put this into perspective, our beloved Digi Bro cut me off when I dared to question or attempt to correct Digi in a video on how shitty and poorly handled the monkey jones situation was i'm not a monkey jones fan i've never been able to finish a single one of his videos hell the only reason i ever asked for monkey to come on my podcast is because he worked with digi and for a pretty big period of time i was a digi bro fan myself digi mr collins whatever you want to call him believes he's beyond reproach but we'll put a pin in that let's get to where the proverbial ball got rolling. This is Dick Masterson of The Dick Show. You know what's really fucked? Is how these stupid e-celebrities all stick together. This cocksucker mundane Matt did a video where he starts it with, Oh, he's always, he's a good guy to me. So, uh, right. you know, I've, it's gotta be something to these claims. Yeah. When there's smoke, there, when there's smoke, there's fire. Yeah. You know? He's mm -hmm. a good, he's a good, good bro. He's mm -hmm. a good bro to me. Mm -hmm. These fucking scumbags, dude, and their bro code. It's really, uh, it's really disgusting. Yeah, how they stick together, and, and don't even bother, don't even bother to read it to see if it makes any, any sense. sense. Yeah, like not even, there's not even accusations. Right, not a single, not a single accusation mm -hmm. is in there mm -hmm. that is like that has any kind of evidence accompanying it. Yeah. It's the spelling for these e-celeb cocksuckers like Chris Raygun and Mundane Matt. Well, I've played this clip before, and if you're new, this will just be under a minute. If this is new to you, you're going to want to brace for this one. However, yeah. I will say this, Digibro. Um, yeah. I don't know if this is accurate because I don't know the terminology of, like, anime shit, but you are uh -huh. self-professed, uh, what is it, lollycon? Fan? Yes. Does that mean I'm, that? What does that mean? It means that I am a huge fan of illustrations of little girls getting fucked. Oh. <laughs> now. <laughs> oh, see that makes it. You see what you when you do that. Yeah. It makes it more. It makes it very uncomfortable. Of course it does. But like. I have to fight for that shit harder than anybody because I like that shit. And I know. if I'm not doing anything wrong and I'm looking at the shit, that means I gotta be on the front fucking line. Now, about a year ago, I was on a podcast called Pub Crawl. I couldn't tell you the episode. It's run by a guy named Cider, really fun. I popped in because I got a notification on Patreon that said Jesse Wood, aka Endless Jess, had pledged to a gentleman by the name of Dick Masterson. So when I went on for the podcast that night, I asked Digibro, Jesse isn't a man who parts with his money 
for another human being easily. This Dick Masterson must be a god among men. Now, Digi can deny his response, and it may even still be up on Pub Crawl buried among hours and hours and hours of podcast, but he said that Dick Masterson is indeed a god among men. He went on this long or big enough discussion about the podcast being called the biggest problem in the universe, and I was told it was a magical journey. I've listened to two or three episodes. For a more detailed explanation, please go check out The Biggest Problem in the Universe, The Dick Show, and How Maddox Fails. It was made by the pedantic romantic now. When I tell you in the past I've been a fan of Digi, till this day I still give the pedantic romantic a dollar on Patreon just because I consider pedantic Digi bro without the drama. You might find that confusing for a would-be drama channel to be repulsed by drama. I'd like to get my first point in for this video. Digi's problems are richly of his own making. Even with the smallest amount of tact, most of this could have been avoided. Tommy C. would have never found Digi if Digi didn't go on the dick show and then said, It means that I am a huge fan of illustrations of little girls getting fucked. This would have never happened. What I'm accusing you of, I believe that your statement on the dick show and my uh, on the um, on the dick show uh, that yeah. I like to uh, I like illustrations of underage girls getting fucks leads me to believe that you are a pedophile. I also believe if you actually hold uh, items that amount to lolly porn, they are in violation of the Protect Act of 2003 and American obscenity laws, not to mention state laws that I am not familiar with. Um, where, where do you want to start? Oh, one more thing. I do, and I do think that you are a purveyor and advocate of illustrated child porn, and which also makes you a purveyor of actual child porn. Now, Tommy C isn't memeing, he isn't giggling, he isn't fucking around, and when I suggested earlier there is a reason to believe that this is a work, it's within the realm of possibility. If I had to bed and call me a dumb mark or a sucker, Tommy appears to be meaning what he says here. Sure, it's possible if Tommy is fucking around, someone needs to hire this guy, because this is some of the best acting I've ever seen. Or maybe Tommy C is just a butthurt Monkey Jones fan. It's just a possibility. Let me point out why this is possible. This is Psy. He is a friend of Monkey Jones. He is a lullicon. He has 168,000 subscribers. If Tommy C went after Digi bro, because of his far-reaching influence, that being about 350,000, why isn't Psy getting one of these videos? Be like, you know, a mobile apartment to just travel the country making your videos. So my question is, you know, if you've looked into this, how much would that cost you? And like, do you think it's an achievable goal? About 20,000 to 30,000 dollars, uh, depending on how fancy I want to make it. That's one shitty and... fucking bus, I gotta say right now. That's one shitty fucking bus. Not not near as much as you'd think. Like the idea is the, the idea of what I want to do is I want to buy an old school bus and like rip out all the seats and renovate it into wait, basically. Wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. Hold on. Holding I need, on. I need to get this. Okay. Uh -huh. Mr. Yes. I like Loli and everyone needs to know wants to buy a fucking yep. school bus to travel yep. the country around with. <laughs> yeah, yes, that, that bit of irony, or not irony. What, what would you that's call that? That's not irony. That, that's stand? called, yeah, I, that's that's called I being on the sex offender list. Hap happenstance? Well, that that's clever not bit of coincidence called, is not lost on me, believe that's me. That's called felony sexual assault. That's not happenstance. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, okay. The idea you is know, I would, she like, told me she was a 6,000-year-old dragon girl, so it was okay. Now, I'm not saying that Lolly is the same thing as pedophilia. Tommy C is. And if Tommy C thinks that, then why isn't he going after Psy? Is there some Tommy C approved OK pedo list? Does Monkey Jones just come over and does Monkey Jones come on down and touch the proverbial lollicon on the head and then Tommy goes, OK, he's one of the goodens. But with that said, let's, let's go back to the Tommy C debate. I got a question for Digi. OK. So first of all, I'm not a pedophile, not attracted to children. Second of all, uh, I don't own any incriminating materials. Okay. So you're free to call the FBI if you like. I don't give a shit. I have nothing to fear. Okay. Uh, third of all, let's talk about the legality okay. of illustrations 
depicting what could be you know we'll say we'll just say illustrations of kids what a wonderful place to leave that so digi in the past likely on more than one occasion on pub crawl you've told me cider and everyone listening that you said you and again you're free to deny this you've often wondered what you'd say in court if any of this came up which means more likely means is within the realm of possibility that you have owned material at one time or another that you felt would at least get you pulled in front of a judge if we take this statement that you made here since then that you've parted ways with such objects of concern you're telling us you're not a pedophile that being a lolicon isn't the same thing and i'm not here to debate that with you i'm sure by now there are oodles of videos that exist already why kick did a very well-made entertaining video on that topic but when i asked him about it he straight up told me that he was fucking with you so i understand the person who made the best argument against you is just a troll with that said and why kick if you i misunderstood or misrepresented you my comment section is open to you i love your work by the way digi here's somewhat of a difficult question for you in my community the brony community the one you came from we had a windfall of people like toon critic who tried europeeing with minors he tried grooming a kid to come up and meet with him at con there's been well around about a handful of people of that area hell recently a show animator got nicked with 60,000 images of child pornography and 1600 videos of cp it's it's been covered by a somewhat official news outlets Whereas in the anime community, the anime analysis community, and it's highly likely I'm just not in the loop enough, I haven't heard anyone speak up about any accusations of anything like this about any of the content creators in your sphere of influence. So, next question, Digi. Do you feel that's because anime fans are just more well-behaved? Or are they just that much better at shutting their mouths? No. Let's amend that question. If there was someone who was quote-unquote a pedophile, a monster, your words, Digi, you'd speak up. You'd do the right thing. You'd warn your community, your fans, kids. Let's be honest. You have about 350,000 subscribers. Seeing as how there is, as you would clearly state, a distinction between a lolicon and a pedophile, that you would have no problem turning in a pedophile in your community. There were two videos, in fact that made me wonder on this very notion. Eternal rain. We're going to save the executions for, you know, cops, politicians, and feminists. Cops, politicians, and feminists. It's pretty much... I guess pedophiles. Not Michael, though, but he's already dead. <laughs> <laughs> is it like, Michael, is, it, is that like a, um... Is that like the cultural scale? I think there was, there's actually people who defend like people like Michael Jackson because they say like I someone it. who did that much good is allowed like a certain amount of of evil. Like I think that's nah. something that some people have said in his defense, which is kind of hilarious. I just think that like uh, I mean let's say that Michael like took some like eight year old boy and made him his like boyfriend, right? Michael's very rich, and he can provide for that kid probably better than his parents, certainly better than a woman. So how is, uh, how is Michael Jackson taking a little boy on dates and buying him things any different than a man taking a woman on dates and buying him things? If you can provide for someone, you can provide for him. Right. I don't disagree. I definitely feel that um, our society has sort of, like, we have this moral... Um, it's, it's can I that, just say that, that I was, moral can I just say that I was completely bullshitting right now? No, 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 no. I wasn't. Ex I wasn't expecting Digi to just completely agree with me. I was expecting like a chuckle or something. No, but that's the thing. Um, <laughs> but he was just like, "Yeah, totally, you're right. Let's well, do it. Let's." Well, no, people have this whole <laughs> moral black and whiteness, you know, and I, I think things like that need to be thought through that way, where you actually take a step back and go, you know, well, I definitely don't if believe that, that kid had black gone, like, and white. let's say that. That kid, um, let's say Michael Jackson never enters his life, and this kid lives in the ghetto, and he grows up to be about 16, gets shot in a gang fight, and that's the fucking end. 
Or there's this alternate timeline where he becomes Michael Jackson's boyfriend, completely loves it, gets to play in fucking Neverland, gets college grants, gets to become a fucking scientist and saves the world in 50 years. Were you wrong for letting Michael Jackson have that little boy? Hey Homer, what'd you do? Get a haircut or something? Look closer, Lenny. Oh, I know what it is. You're the biggest man in the world now. And you're covered in gold. 14 karat gold. Were you wrong for letting Michael Jackson have that little boy? Look at you. You're part of a 12-headed jackass. This course is the feces that is produced when shame eats too much stupidity. You people make me envy the deaf and the blind. Underwear, money, fat. Sadly, I don't have the first one anymore, but someone in the audience might. It was called Why Monkey Jones Was Kicked from the PCP, the Digi story. Digi mentioned Psy and someone else, I forget the second person's name, when talking about either Monkey Jones's chat or Mr. Meatman's chat, I forget where you said this happened, but you said so-and-so is a pedophile, that he's a monster. That name only ever came up in that video because monkey fans were bullying the guy in Digi's words. Digi was more interested in pointing out that the pedophile, the monster, was being bullied. This is my area of concern. Let's break this question up into three levels of difficulty. Digi, if someone you knew in the fandom, your fandom, the anime fandom, was dangerous, in that way with kids, a non-friend, let's let's say a Glass Reflections or a Chibi Reviews or Psy was a pedophile, i.e., you know, someone you're not friends with, would you speak up? All right, let's, let's make that a little bit harder. What if it was someone you were friends with? What if it was one of your main friends, one of the ones you lived with? If this answer is yes to all three, then you can turn away now. Additionally, would any of them speak up about you? If Again, if the answer is yes, I'd like to thank you for your time and transparency, and I'd move on. The problem is, Digi, you don't handle well with being questioned if you were a pedophile. If, not saying that you are, I'm saying if you were, I'd be skeptical that anyone in your inner circle would speak up. Let's, let's lay out a scenario here. It's early in the morning, or whenever Digi rolls out of bed, Digi winds up leaving his door cracked or wide open. Let's say the Davu or Ben or the Mrs. or whoever walks by and sees porn of a non-2D fashion. It's a somewhat youthful nature. Would they A. Keep the door open, B. Close the door, C. Bum rush you to confront you about it, or D. Immediately call the police. Based on some of the things that you've said, Digi, I get the feeling that you were raised as if you were a genius, that your tastes and interests were to be nurtured. Now, there's no doubt that you're a successful individual, and we'll get back to that before we close out. Digi, if you were a pedo, not that you are, but if you were, would you be loud and proud about it? Would you be arguing on the front line? Would you be one of those minor attracted persons that you find on Twitter and Tumblr? I understand these are obtuse questions. These come up because you're on the front line with so many things that you debate about, about obscenity laws. I have a theory about this, Digi. See, when we were still talking, you were making $4,000 per video. Today, you're making $3,000 per month. And yes, these are just Patreon estimates. You told me on PubCrawl that you barely bothered to check your Google AdSense, that every once in a while, there'd just be a check there for a couple extra thousand dollars, and that's when you could be bothered to remember. Okay, so I'm going to show you a map here. I got this from someone whose name starts with a V. You've, you've talked about them recently. I'm going to include a link to a Google Doc just to show everyone how I got this. I just want to make sure that this didn't come from me. It's a lolly map on where it's legal and to some extent where it's illegal in the United States to possess said material. Digi was, at the very beginning of this, or at his beginning of his journey, started in a red state originally and he moved to a blue state. Blue being entirely legal and red being entirely illegal. Take this map with a grain of salt, obviously. You've moved to, I believe it's Virginia, which according to this map is entirely red, uh, a i.e. entirely prohibited. Now, Digi may or may not have ditched his stockpile of lolly porn. That's not my concern. I'm not the lolly police. Let's replay the dick clip, shall we? I know I'm not doing anything wrong and I'm looking at the shit. That means I gotta be on the front fucking line. See, this thing is, Digi, you went somewhere you legally could engage in your not so 
personal interest to your heart's content. And then I have a couple theories here which open up a lot of discussion on that matter. See, a while ago, you did a video called Fuck Commentary Entitlement. Asterisk War, the asterisk war sucks, you know? It would be fucking weird because the criticism has nothing to do with the art piece. Like, it's not something that they wanted attached to it. It's not something that everybody needs attached to it. And for some people, it will probably damage their enjoyment of the product. I mean, I know that's literally my goal with that series, is to damage people's enjoyment of the Asterisk War. But, like, I don't have a right to doing that, you know, on the product. Now, for context, Digi is talking about asterisk where he's willing to concede because it makes him feel comfortable yeah he's one of those guys that criticism should be walled away from the art itself i.e if digi wants to shut off his comments he has every right in the world to do so now if you look at this comment section and i could be wrong the comment section i believe used to be shut off that's why there's only 14 comments now there was a video where he originally had them shut off. Maybe it was here. Again, maybe I was wrong. But the point here is, Digi, all his friends, minus Nate Kegman, had a set of rules that include not leaving remarks that have not already been left. This is a Jerry Pete classic rule that these people feel that you should have to read through all their comments and not give a point that's already been made. Now, I could scream SJW, I feel that kind of goes without saying, but the only thing that happened to Digi is his fans had to pull the choke chain on him when his Patreon began to plummet, when his views began to go down and circle the drain, when Digi attempted to declare war on his fans, and finally Digi's fans managed to beat into Digi's thick skull that he is here because of them and not the other way around. This happened because Digi surrounded himself with yes-men. I had to talk to you when you were dealing with Gegook, Gegook during your crybaby bitch fit. Your answer was, it doesn't matter, my views and money went up. And I tried explaining to you that these are short-term gains. I'm sure Digi will come back with something like, I listen to criticism all the time. Okay, let's look at this. Positive comments that you put on Demo's videos as well negate your statement that his last two videos seem vapid, but also makes me think that you're disingenuous. If you feel this way about his videos, why not comment on them? Aren't you the one who's all about criticizing each other in order to improve? Aren't you the one who complained that too many people are too passive-aggressive? Why are you complaining about this if you aren't going to be the first one to put it into practice? I don't leave a comment of praise on a video unless I really like the video because it's kind of dumb to leave a long-winded comment on a video about your excitement on the subject if you feel that it wasn't presented in the right way. This is a hiccup, Digi. I'm not expecting a saint. I'm not expecting a flawless computer. I understand that you're a human being. You're going to make contradictions. I'm going to understand that you're going to move on in life from things that you used to like. I've always understood your sense of taste has always sucked. It's why you're an analyst and not a reviewer. Your fans shouldn't have to hear back when they say, hey, I like Digibro, and then have someone bring up a fan of illustrations of little girls getting fucked. Oh. You saying you don't have to go on a man show that you respect and laugh about liking kids fucking Digi, drawn or not, I want to give you credit. And good news from one of your videos, uh, the turkey Tom gets roasted. Guy who uh, stayed at my house for a while and has this horror story of me being the this ultimate cringe lord. And I'm going to tell you all who this guy is. You see, up until recently, I've been trying to, as much as it seems like I respond to all the drama surrounding me, I really haven't been, and it's because for a long time I thought if I ignored the worst people who had it out for me, eventually they'd go away. And recently I learned that's never going to happen. The people who are who are really, you know, out for me, they're not just going to disappear. They have to be talked about and dealt with. So let's talk about Vita, the guy who was at my house for a week. This video made Vita go into a total ass bowl. You turned Vita into a bitch-made nick. Radio. You called him out, and I and one of my Patreons offered Vita $50 to go debate you, and he bitched out to that. I, on the other hand, will be glad to talk to you, Conrad, preferably not on the weekend, if you're taking on all comers. And keep in mind, my argument here isn't moral or even necessarily a legal one, but it's simply a matter of tact. It's 
common sense. Now, I don't know if you moved to Virginia, whether it was because money got tight, but if it did, it would have been your fault by making an enemy out of so many of your fans. I've talked to people like What the What or Why Kick. At least in What's case, if you listen to his videos, you can tell that he is a super fan, that this is someone who legit wants or at least wanted to like you. Now, whether those were reasonable expectations, that's your call. The other idea that you moved to Virginia is you decided to court drama because you felt that you could legally argue into creating new law, that you saw some flaw in the system, that you'd have the know-how and the balls to win. Digi, do you understand that you're putting up your friends, the Devu, possibly Tommy Oliver, your girlfriend, Ben Saint, and if you fucking go to jail, your friends will not be able to sustain without you. This isn't my opinion, this is a fact. You are being a selfish asshole. You're endangering the well-being of your friends so that you can grandstand. And the situation that you're in is because you had to go down this path all the way back to the Geguk drama. Geguk. Because you won when you shouldn't have. And you had to put your balls in a wheelbarrow in charge. Pedophile? For real? No kidding? And I don't trust you, so well, I'm not going to... Well, you're wrong. I am not going... Well, well you, you have say you're wrong. no I, evidence to suggest that whatsoever, uh, yes, by the I, way. Yes, I do. And I think it's, it's, it's utter... Your Show me your evidence. Your you're, uh, the, I, again, we can go back to the dick show. I enjoy illustrated My dick pictures. My dick show quote where I say I, I enjoy yeah, illustrations. Illustrated pictures of... Uh, the, and I think what you're doing is you're mincing words because it's not reasonable nor logical to believe for a second that if you enjoy that, you would enjoy the real thing. Why did you put yourself in this situation... How in the hell did you not have parents at some point in time in your life who grabbed you and slapped some sense into you, Digi? What is your payoff? Whatever paltry amount of money you got for this exposure wouldn't have been necessary if originally you would have just went out up to Gegook like a man and talked to him. Or if you went up to Monkey Jones like a man and said, hey, we gotta cut you. I'm sorry, I respect you, I just feel this way, I have to do this for a friend, right or wrong. Or Digi, maybe you could have gone on the dick show and maybe memed and said, well, maybe I'm just a little bit more honest than Kurt Eichenwald, and that's it. Because then, if you would have gone on and had to debate Tommy C afterwards, you could have said, well, why aren't you bothering Kurt Eichenwald? To help I'm trying to days. make an example of you. Whether you get charged or not, because I am, I, mean, I am turning all this information over to the FBI and your past statements and your own videos, and I'm putting it all Go together. Ahead. And if nothing happens, if nothing happens, the way I see it, it is a stepping stone because illustrated child porn should be illegal. It is not protected speech. It is not protected expression. It and is. It is. No, it, it isn't. It is and both of those things. No, it isn't. And retard. no, it isn't. And I'll tell you, I'll tell you why it isn't. Because obscenity laws have been upheld in the United States Supreme Court since 1973. And I'm telling you, underage girls being fucked meets obscenity law. My advice to Digi is you take your ass to anywhere on this motherfucking map that's blue. Tommy C. can wail on about his interpretation of state law, which, Tommy, if you're listening, what you said is illegal. You are not a sanctioned member of any legal bar. You cannot define or give any legal advice to anyone. You are potentially presenting yourself. You know what? Not, not potentially. You are presenting yourself as a legal authority. Now, I'm not a lawyer. I can't tell you if this would have been fraud or negligence or what have you. Tom, for you to be on the up and up here, you would have had to have been a lawyer and you would have likely had to have been a lawyer experienced in this field, i.e. you wouldn't flip open a wiki somewhere and read off a couple of pages and dub yourself a YouTube lawyer. Also, if nothing happens, by definition, how can that be a stepping stone? And I'm putting it all Go together. Ahead. And if nothing happens... If nothing happens, the way I see it, it is a stepping stone. A stepping stone is progress, Tommy. Nothing is the exact opposite of progress. I'm not condoning what Digi's into. Literally, what you said here is trying to pull bullshit if you lose. Also, Tommy, if Digi does go to court and Digi does win, Digi does make new law and makes it easier to further degradate society, I will never let anyone forget that it is your fault. Fair is fair. His name is Christopher Hanley. And in this, in, in he was charged with actually getting, he was a prolific manga collector. 
And uh -huh. he, I know this charges. case. Now, Judge James Gritzer ruled in two parts to protect that, uh, criminalizing a visual description of any kind. That doesn't mean every kind, including drawing, cartoon, sculpture, and painting was unconstitutional. So that would that would actually meet the definition of, of lolly porn. But Hanley was still convicted under obscenity, which you said is, is unconstitutional, even though it's been upheld since 1973. So the part is not legal. It's been gut this this law has been gutted slightly. But if you like, uh, this is what I'm saying. Watching underage so wait, you girls just said that illustrated porn on on illust yes said yes that. I am I'm saying that child porn. That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm not. No, I'm you just said that it's. You just said that that the judge decided that the lolly that the that, the, the that manga part. porn he had was not illegal to have. You no no that. no no. That's not what he said. He he struck down part of the law and still charged and convicted him. Of violating obscenity with the same material. What did, what did he charge him? For, like, what did he do that had violated the obscenity? He uh, he was a prolific collector of manga. He pleaded guilty uh, to charges related. Okay. To, re, re, let what? me finish. Related to the Protect Act in exchange for a six-month plea bill, a five-year probation, a forfeiture of manga and anime what that had been seized by police. What did he do specifically that was cited as him having broken the obscenity law? Uh, because if the judge he was, threw he out was he was convicted no 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 he was convicted of obscenity he said that the yes, material what, that means that means the manga for? that means the manga material that he had Hold met on. the Miller Tommy, test. Tommy, please do the rest of the research and tell me what did he actually get convicted for? He was convicted of violating the part of the uh, of the Protect Act that deals with obscenity, which reads and, and how did he do that? In what way did with he do his, that? With uh, uh, the, the I, I would imagine the seized. You uh, would imagine the, where uh, is oh, your uh, the prolific collect. Data. Oh, let me read the whole thing. Uh, related to the Protect Act and also in exchange for a six month plea and forfeiture of his collection. So I would imagine. I think it's logical to say whatever he pleaded guilty to was. Seized the his seized collection. It is, is that logical to say, but you don't know. All right, so, I, um, uh, no, I do know. I read it, and I think it's completely reasonable that he wouldn't have pled guilty if nothing in there to didn't do, reach. To if what? nothing, what then why did he plead guilty? Please enlighten me. Probably if he, he if he was completely innocent idiot. and the part of the law was found unconstitutional, why did he plead guilty? Because he's a coward who gave up. Okay. He was done with Next, the fight. when you find yourself in this position, I'm saying be a tough guy. Get in there. And I gotta admit, you do have you do have the balls. And I'm gonna do absolutely everything I can to make that happen. And if it doesn't happen with me, I'm going to keep going. I'm gonna keep an eye on you from now into eternity. Because yes, <laughs> I believe you're a pedophile. I believe you are. I, I believe that you're an advocate of child pornography and. And you use this illustrated. It's illustrated. Illustrated. I think that's that. a cop out, and I think you're jet, uh, you're actually being. Let dishonest. me tell you right now, Tommy C. If you're watching, this is sorry about that extra big clip. Digi's banter made it necessary between you and yourself to kind of play the whole clip here, to play a bigger clip here. I'm not trying to abuse fair use. To Tom, again, if this goes down and Digi wins, I'm not letting you walk away from this for the rest of your life. The fine people of Virginia will know that Tommy C made this possible. To Digi, I remember originally when you moved on to one of these big blue states, and trollingly and smugly I said, if Digi really believed that he's done nothing wrong, he would just move to one of these red ones. And had this just been your own livelihood, if this had been you and just putting your own ass in a sling in a really perverse roundabout way, I'm sure there's some way of respect for the amount of balls that you'd be showing to pull all your well-being and your livelihood on the line so that you could defend your right to indulge in a single solitary fetish that you have. Because I remember being on Pub Crawl. This can't be the only thing that you're into. This isn't Digi defending his sexuality or gender or any of that bullshit. This is Digi defending his right to indulge in a single solitary kink as vocally and humanly possible to do so to make people feel as uncomfortable as possible. Thank you. Fuck you. Bye.